Hey everyone, uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I'm excited to be here with Pontus from Midday AI. Um, thanks so much for joining us for kind of a behind the scenes of uh, your project, um, which happens to be open source as well, which is really cool. Um, maybe we we'll can jump straight in. Can you tell me a little bit, you know, what is Midday AI and why did you start working on it? Yeah, okay. Melee is basically a, a thin layer on top of your old 90s bank and your accountant software. It's like an all-in-one tool for the smallest business owners like consultants, freelancers to, to be on top of their business, basically. Uh, in the end, track hours, send invoices and see insights on their financials that they, they didn't know, actually. Uh, some sort of burn rate. Uh, runway, all those kind of important things when you when you run your business, right? Um, yeah, and sprinkle some AI and, and nice insights on top of that. That's great. And uh, what was kind of your, you know, sort of spark of, of starting this project? Uh, was it something that you needed yourself or? Yeah, so I've been running my own business for eight years and my co-founder, Victor, he's been running on his own design studio for three years. And we all use the different scatter tools like for sending invoices, signing in on your old bank, right? And, and have this system, local system as for uh, bookkeeping. And, and all of those are made for accountants. And you end up using like 95% of those features, right? Um, and it basically came up as from frustration. My, my accountant, uh, she's super nice, but grumpy because I'm sending my my uh, receipts in US dollar, but my uh, my transactions are in Swedish krona. She needs to backtrack those, and I just want to find a good way to reconcile those for her, basically. And then, then we started building in public on Twitter while working full time, and then yeah, then we just continue basically. That's amazing. Yeah, that's that's great. And you know, obviously, you're building with um, Superbase. That's why we're doing this this video here. Yeah. Um, I'd love to maybe dig into a little bit, kind of what's the architecture of um, the stack. I believe you're building with Next.js and Superbase. Uh, anything yes. else that's kind of in there? Yeah, I mean, we're using Trigger.dev to to handle uh, background jobs for actually fetching your transaction, but also doing heavy work like uh, parsing PDFs that comes in in the inbox with OCR technology. Uh, so yeah, I, we we have heavy users of Superbase, Trigger.dev, uh, Resend, React Email, and all those kind of shiny tools. So yeah, it's super fun. Nice, yeah, and you can uh, dig into the project. It's uh, fully open source on on GitHub. Uh, we'll put the link below as well. You can you can t take a look in there, um, and then maybe can you dig a little bit into kind of how you're um, using Superbase? You know, are you um, calling it from sort of the server? Are you using an ORM like uh, Drizzle or you know Superbase JS? Yeah, what's the scoop? Yeah. Yeah, I actually went full full into uh, uh, Superbase uh, using the JavaScript SDK. Uh, but on top of that, I'm, I'm using this unstable cache from uh, Next.js uh, because I'm a heavy user of uh, server actions, right? And it makes sense to have a wrapper on top of that so you'll be able to just uh, revalidate the cache whenever. Uh, so I just made basically a, a cached queries function file with the queries and then the parameters and then in the end i'm just calling them from the server side and then basically just render render those right with the suspense and all all those kind of things wow okay so you, you're at the bleeding edge of kind of next js um, of course <laughs> yeah brilliant um that's that's been interesting i think that's that's a good example um because kind of as next js was sort of transitioning through um, you know, server actions and server components. Um, it's great, great to have an example that kind of uses uh, Superbase heavily in, in that manner. Um, yeah. That's exciting. And then I, I assume you're using uh, Superbase for auth as well. Is that correct? Yeah, so we are using Superbase for auth, uh, for storage, for, of course, Postgres, uh, and a lot of uh, custom PG functions and triggers, embeddings. I, I would say we're probably using uh, the majority of, of everything in, in Superbase. Uh, so yeah, it's it's super nice. That's great. And you know, talking about AI, um, you know, obviously you're you have a .ai domain, so I assume you're using <laughs> some AI stuff somewhere. Can you talk a little bit about kind of what's your setup for AI, and you know, where are you using it, and how? 
Yeah, I mean, as everybody know, AI is moving super fast and you're trying to jump on the right things. But from the beginning, it felt really right to have have your data and the embeddings in the same place. So that's, of course, why we're using PG Vector for the embeddings. And we started with your categories, basically, for transactions. Because in the end, we want to ask questions around your transactions, your financials. Uh, and you usually want to ask something like, how much did I spend on software last month, for example? Uh, we can then cluster that, of course, and be a really nice interface where you can ask questions around it, but also return the calculated value by just calling a, a, a PG function uh, with, with like open AI function in this case, for just calling the right, right things, right? Uh, so it, it makes total sense for us to just uh, glue those things together. Uh, we're still experimenting a, a lot with it. Uh, otherwise, we use uh, OCR technology to scrape, or not scrape, but uh, extract information from the PDFs and uh, like receipts. Uh, so when you're sending something that you bought, we, we parse that with Google Document AI, uh, okay. fall back on, on Azure Document AI, and then in the end, uh, adding that to, to, the, to the database, and then you can search on things within your uh, receipts. So it's a nice experience for, for our users to find what they actually need to find, but we can also match those things against the transactions. So you're good to go for your for your accountant purposes. Oh, nice. So is that kind of where sort of trigger.dev comes in, where you're kind of enqueuing sort of the PDFs and, and yeah. invoices? Um, exactly. Can you, can you show us a little bit maybe the code kind of behind that? Sort yeah. Of where, where does that stuff live? So basically, we trigger a background job thanks to uh, trigger functions in uh, Superbase, right? Uh, document. So here is like our background job basically takes the, uh, the Sorry, database can, can role. You zoom in a little bit. <laughs> Your screen is massive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's see. Does that make sense? Maybe? Yeah, I think that's good. So basically you define a job, in this case, inbox document, uh, that gets triggered when you have a new record in, in, in Superbase, right? Uh, inbox record. Uh, based on that information, we, we pick the, the actual file that is uploaded to Superbase storage. Uh, and in the end, send that to our facade, which is basically, in this case, a document uh, OCR uh, endpoint on, on Google. Uh, we're gonna experiment with uh, Azure in the end also. Uh, depending if it's a receipt like a JPEG or something like that, we're gonna choose another uh, provider in the end. Um, but basically this in the end, just as I mentioned, it's just a basic call if it's a PDF. We use the invoice processor. In this case, it's Google. And then we just pick the information that we are interested in, right? Uh, in the end, you get that back as a result. And then we just add that to the database row, right? Uh, if we then uh, got the amount from the PDF in this case, we send a new background job, which is match the inbox against the, uh, against the transaction. So then you're coming in to match. And also the nice thing is everything is encrypted on row level with the transactions, right? So we use, uh, PD sodium in the end, I think, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, so that, that is also super nice because, I mean, of course, uh, we have extra security and that's that's really good. Uh, but yeah, in the end, we just match the amount for in this case, this is gonna be much smarter when we actually have embeddings on the, on the transactions also, then we can do a, a smarter uh, uh, calculation here. Uh, yeah, and in the end, we just matching the transaction against attachment and we, we're good to go. We're sending in an email or notification when we actually match a PDF against the transaction. And then in the end, hopefully you're done in the end of the month, right? You can just export that. So yeah, nice. I mean, uh, yeah, it's and super nice. I think you mentioned as well, you're using Superbase for generating embeddings. Is that the, the new kind of feature within <laughs> Superbase Edge functions? Of course, uh, we're actually using it not only like we trigger it when it's insert or update, but also we use this. I think I asked you for help for it uh, to, to choose the, the right column within the table. So we, we are updating it when you actually have the content change. So the function is only called when, when it makes sense, right? 
So yeah, it, it's it's a really good eye opener what you can or she with so so little code, right? Um, let's see. I think I have it. Uh, I have my folder superless functions generate categories. Uh, there. So yeah, I mean it's it's super basic uh, in terms of code, right? And that's the beauty. Uh, so this is triggered when the the category name is updated uh, or inserted. We basically just run this embedding that you have on on disk, so it's super fast. Uh, and then just inserting it, and then then we're good to go, right? Um, so it's nice. it's really really nice. Now I didn't open this as a workspace, so that's it's that's why it's super red. Yeah, and then. Um, so, so I guess you're using both uh, kind of Vercel edge functions for like Next.js uh, and then super super base edge functions. How how are you kind of thinking about that? Is it basically yeah you're using super base edge functions? You know, for example, for the embeddings because that's something um, that's kind of uniquely available at least at the moment within super base edge functions. But then I guess for for everything else, it makes sense for it to be kind of in within Next.js. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we're using a uh, Vercel AI SDK, but in the end, we really would love to have Llama 3 running in, in Superbase, of course, mm. uh, because then we can not only have it locally, but also keep everything in one place, right? We can keep we can keep all the data in, in like our own manner, which makes total sense. Uh, but in the end, we're not sending any transactions through the wire because we're doing the function calls, as you mentioned, uh, just because hallucin hallucination is, I mean, it's, it's quite easy to get transactions wrong when you're sending raw data, right? So we have a bunch of different function calls in the end, which are like a call with RPC, uh, like get profit, get the revenue. And in the end, we parsing that with SOD to really understand the inputs from, from, the, from the text that you submit, basically. Gotcha. Uh, so we actually look into uh enable insight in three weeks in, in midday for our users because we really want to iron out this like should we use grok or should we use open ai or llama free mm -hmm. uh, but the nice thing with the, with versal sdk it's just a matter of change the provider right uh, gotcha. so yeah it's it's really cool nice and then maybe in terms of you know postgres and and managing migrations kind of how how has that experience been for you and sort of how how you're handling that we actually have two different environments right now, uh, and we're using like migrations uh, and all those kind of things that you get with the CLI. Uh, but one thing that we really would like to have insights on is basically history of your functions and also if you could trigger those uh, in some sort of test UI where you can trigger uh, what happened if you get a new record for inbox and we have some functions that are triggered, right? I would really like to see and visualize that sort of like the database schema, which is brilliant, where you can see how everything is tied together. But I would like to see what's happening when I get the new record in this column or in table and what's outputted from that. Uh, mm, and so also kind of some end, sort of- end to end workflow. Yeah, and some sort of, uh, maybe some sort of checks, like test if, if the functions are changing through uh, deployments, et cetera. It would be really nice to have some sort of assurance that you're not breaking things. Uh, it's super nice to put a lot of things in the database layer, uh, but it could also be a little bit uh, fragile from time to time. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, cool. Yeah, maybe then on that point, maybe we can start um, sort of working with Superbase. What's been kind of your favorite part about it? I mean, <laughs> I don't know actually where to start. I mean, I, I'm fully, fully into Superbase, as everybody know. Uh, we wouldn't be where we are with Midday, uh, just one engineer, one designer, uh, if we wouldn't choose Superbase. I mean, I've been using uh, other providers, and you usually end up to stitch up different providers to just get the basic like uh, storage, and then you use, you need off, and you need. Uh, I don't know, uh, everything like pr permission control, etc. So for us, it has been a really like eye opener what you can or she with so little time. Uh, me, they started as a, a late night and weekend project for ourselves. Uh, now we're working full time and we can only dream where we will be in, in a couple of months, thanks to like Superbase, Vercel and all these shiny tools. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean, 
I couldn't imagine choosing something else right now. Oh, that's amazing. That's great to hear. But then, you know, obviously there, you, you know, you mentioned it already around kind of migrations and sort of experience of, of functions and triggers and visualizing that. Um, you know, any kind of other things that like would be a huge improvement for you and like improve your life? The, the, actually, the, the only thing that kept me back was uh, read replicas, but you already <laughs> fixed that. Uh, so, I mean, of course, we have users, 80% of our users are in the US, uh, but the rest of them are in Europe. So it, for us, it makes total sense to have replicas. And we already have that and are uh, using it in, in production. Um, otherwise, I, I, haven't, I haven't stumbled upon anything that I'm missing. Uh, I mean... You also have integrations with Trigger.dev uh, recent. Uh, I don't actually have anything that comes to mind. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, you know, Twitter, Twitter DMs are always open. So yeah, I know that's a nice thing. You know, to let us know. And yeah, thanks. Yeah. Thanks so much for um, you know being so vocal on Twitter and building in public. It really, um, really is great to see. Uh, and you know, like we learn a lot from seeing you guys building with Superbase. So, thank, thank you. you for that, and thank you so much for taking the time um, for giving us a look behind the scenes. Pontus, really appreciate it. Say, thank you. Cheers. Cheers, man. All right, bye bye.